Hello and well, welcome back to my channel. My name is Diana and I thought I'd be doing some, um, like a small little book haul. I have not done it in quite a while. So I thought I would show you some stuff. Um, I have shown them, like, some of the books you might see that are kind of familiar in my previous haul. I would just, might as well put them in here and, yeah, so. Let's get going. So my first book is The Library of Shadows by Rachel Moon. Radcliffe Plick. The third was haunted school in the country where student disappearances aren't uncommon and no one dares stay in the library after dark. And where Esther Logan unrolls with the hopes of finding her dead father, not literally, of course, she doesn't believe in ghosts. Going to her dad's school just seems like a best hope and figure out who he is. But then Esty meets Mattel, who is maybe, probably, definitely a real ghost. And annoying one of that, when Mattel frames Esty for a theft of a rare book from the library's secret spire, then vanishes, Esty will have to track him down or risk being expelled and leave Radcliffe early just like her father did. So this has been on my TV for quite some time and I'm just super excited for it. My next one is Sun the Gong by Joanne He. All her life, therefore, has tried to rise above her humble origins as a no-name orphan. Now she's a god in warrior's body, and she has never felt more powerless. Her brother Jin Ren holds the West Bank, but her position in ten years in the North, and the Empress remains under Mia Sama's thumb. And the South, the alliance with Zakata is in pieces. I mean, is the cover gorgeous? So beautiful. I think I am an all out with the blue bugs. You will see what I mean. <laughs> So it's quite interesting actually. I did not plan this whatsoever. But uh, anyways, the next one is The Words Are wa Always Watching by Stephanie Perkins. Bears are the only predators in the woods. Best friends Nina and Josie spent high school as outsiders, but at least they had each other. Now in college and a 2,000 mile separation living on the horizon, they have one less chance to be together. A three day hike deep in the woods of the Pissar National Forest. Seven pages lead to a detour of the trail and straight into a walking nightmare. And then something far worse, something that will test them in horrifying ways. My next one my next one is Darker by Four by June Ziel Tan. And then she will go a hollow boy and missing God. Lu has one goal in mind, honing her magic to avenge her mother's death. Yet it is a black sheep of an illustrious family. The world will be at his feet had he born, been born with magic. Nikai is a reaper serving the fourth king of hell. When his master disappears, the underworld begins to crumble, and the human world will be next if the king is not found. Exciting stuff. <laughs> and so here's another yet blue book, and that is A Haunting in the Arctic by C. J. Cook. 1901, on board the Ormond, a whaling ship battling through an unforgiving old sea, a woman awakens, awakes. Attacked and dragged her against her will, and just her and the crew, and they all own something like she can give them. 1973, decades later, when the ship is found still drifting across the ocean, it's deserted, just one body is left on board, his face and feet mutilated, with his cabin locked from the inside, everyone else has vanished. Can we repeat? Honestly, I do love ghost ships, I don't know, but they're just so fascinating. And I probably hyped up this for so long, but I'm genuinely excited. It's my Zachary Mary by Cynthia Hand, Brody Ashton, and Joni Meadows. Not Joni Benson. If you know, you know. <laughs> Fa Fish out of water, Mary. Isn't just a little mermaid. True, she got like so she can run after the not so charming prince, but after he walks on her, does she spares off love. She rather conquer the seven seas as a pirate, even if, if it means she has no hash to pose as a boy. Son of a sea witch, Jack, is Mary's cousin and childhood BFF. When he learns he's half human, he goes above to find his long lost father. Instead, he loses his heart to the Mishashias. The cameras want to be a pirate and Bonnie, and he would give anything to be a part of her world. So, this is what the series is, in case you guys are interested. Um, but it's just so silly. I just love this, and just, and it's historical, but it's not meant to be taken seriously. And so, if you are that kind of person, I highly recommend reading these series. It's just so funny, so entertaining. I just love the narration. It's just so goofy. I just love it. <laughs> so, taking a break from the blue books, I have Hedda by Jennifer Saint. Even the gods must have their queen. 
My name is Molten Goddess Hannah and her brother Zeus, overthrown and try not, try not to call father. She dreams of ruling at Zeus' side, but as they establish the reign on Mount Olympus, Hannah begins to see that Zeus is just as ruthless and cruel as the father betrayed. While Zeus ascends, Hannah is regretted to the role of wife and mother, a role she never wanted. She was always born to rule, but she must lose herself in perpetuating this cycle of violence and cruelty, or can she find a way to forge a better world? You go, go. <laughs> My next book is Tender Beast by Liz Sarah Sandberg. Sunny Bearhead has four siblings, but only one is a murderer. With the death of Sunny's mother, matriarch of the wealthy Bearhead family, Sunny's once picture perfect life is thrown into turmoil. Her mother had groomed her to be the family next leader, or so Sunny is confused when the only instruction her mother left is a mysterious note. Take care of them. Isn't the cover so cool? It's so cool, I love it. Are you guys ready to see the most creepiest book ever? It will possibly give you nightmares. Ready? Are you ready now? How about now? I a Darling Dreadful Thing by Joanna Van Veen. I mean, look at it. It's so creepy. I love it. <laughs> if the dead can wake and walk among us, how can we know what is truly real? That is honestly a good question. <laughs> you decide. <laughs> Ruth's back man has a spare companion only she can see. Ruth strange, corpse like, and dead for centuries. And Ruth's back man has a spare companion only she can see. Ruth strange, corpse like, and dead for centuries is the light of Ruth's life. That is until the wealthy young brother Agnes Noop visits one of Ruth's back from Shans, Shans, and the two strike up a connection. So, I am just so creepy. Imagine if the hands just suddenly turns. Okay, that's actually creepy. <laughs> and my next one is the mystery writer by Salavi Gentil. There's nothing easier to dismiss than a conspiracy theory until it turns out to be true. When Theodore is bent on a balance of career path as an attorney and shows up on her brother's doorstep with two suitcases and an unfinished novel, she expects to face a few challenges. Will her brother support her ambition or send her back to finish her degree? What will her parents say when they learn of her decision? Does she even have what it takes to be a successful writer? What Theo never expects is to be drawn into a hidden literary world in which identity is something that can be lost and remade for the sake of an audience. When her mentor, a highly successful author, is brutally murdered, Theo wants the killer to be found and justice to be served. Then the police begin looking at her brother, Gus, as the crime is desperate, and Theo does the unthinkable in order to protect him. But the writer has left the trail, a thread out of the labyrinth in the form of a story, and Gus finds her that that thread follows it, and in his attempt to save his sister, he inadvertently threatens the foundation of the labyrinth itself. To protect the carefully constructed narrative, Theo Benton and everyone looking for her will have to die. My next one is The Woman in the by Salari Gentil. In every person's story, there is something to hide. What are you guys are hiding? I'm just kidding. <laughs> The audit meeting room at the Boston Public Library is quiet until the tranquility is shattered by a woman's certified scream. Security guards take charge immediately, instructing everyone inside to stay put until the threat is identified and contained. While they wait for the all clear, four strangers who happen to sit at the same table past the time in conversation, and friendships are struck. Each has his or her reasons for being in the meeting room that morning. It just happens that one of them is a murderer. And my next one is Secluded Cabin Sleep 6 by Lisa Ungar. Three covers went to luxury cabin in these woods for a weekend getaway to die. Well, okay. What could be more reserved for more restorative and then a weekend getaway with family and friends? Hannah's loving gen and generous tech girl brother found a listing in for a secluded dream house online. It's his birthday gift to Hannah and includes his spouse and another couple. And the six friends need this trip with good food, good company, and lots of on and on, far from the chatter and pressures of modern life. But the endelic weekend is about to turn into a nightmare. And the storm is brewing. The mental health seems is just a little too present. The personal chef reveals that the beautiful house has a spine tingling history. And the friends have their own complicated past with secrets to run blood deep. How well does Hannah know her brother, her, her own husband? Can she trust her best friend? And who is the new boyfriend crashing their party? Meanwhile, someone is determined to ruin the weekend, looking to exact a payback for days long buried. Who is the stranger among them? I'm going back to the blues because it is Monday Blue. I'm filming this on a Monday, so I do have the blues. <laughs> it's Voyage of Down by Frances White. I have shown you guys this before, but 
I have to show you guys again. It's just so stunning. So pretty. Look at the holographic. Oh my god, don't you just love the shine? And you guys have seen the inside. I don't think I showed you the inside. Or well, maybe I did actually. I mean, isn't this beautiful? Come on y'all. This is probably one of the prettiest book I ever owned. I'm so happy I got it. And it's so stunning. I love it. And look at that. Isn't that cool? And look at this. She kind of made up like a family tree, I guess. It's so cool. Twelve magical blessings, twelve days at sea, one chance to stop a killer and save the world. For a thousand years, the Concordia has maintained peace between its provinces. To mark this incredible feat, let the Emperor's ship embarks upon a twelve day voyage to the sacred goddess's mountain. On board are the twelve heirs of the provinces of Concordia. Concordia, each grace with a unique and secret magical ability known as a blessing. All except one, Gannon Mendez, Pisano, class clown slacker, and all around disappointment. When the beloved here is murdered, everyone is a suspect, stuck at sea, and surrounded by powerful people, and without a blessing to protect him, Gannon Mendez's odds of survival are slim. My next book is Nefroda by Melania Evans. There are many paths to power that all come with a price. The food of princes and high prices of Kenmet knows her duty is to her people. When your mother is a great family, it is hard to forget. But the food has a unique position that comes with high stakes for her country. Especially when she's forced to serve from vile half brother, a man determined to stop the food's potential lies. So, this sounds really good and I'm excited for it. My next one is The Black House by Carol Johnson. A remote village of Dilly's secret, a woman who knows the truth. Robert Mead moves and moved his family to Scotland's outer heavens, driven by home, craving safety and community, and hiding a terrible secret. But despite his efforts to fit in, Robert is seen as an outsider, as a legendary violent and Himbalian storms rage around him. He thinks it tends to unravel, believing his fate on the remote island of Kilmary cannot be escaped. What did you do? <laughs> My next one is The Haunting of Ashburn House by Dar Darcy Coates. There's something wrong with Ash Ashburn House. Everyone knows about Ashburn House. They whispered that its old owner went mad and rest as well still walk the halls. But when Adrian is a desperate and in need of a place to stay and inherits the family old mansion, she only sees it as a lifeline until darkness falls. And that's when the ghouls and the witches are partying. I'm just kidding. My next one is Murder Road by Simone St. James. A young couple find themselves haunted by swing and grips and murders coming along an old deserted road. July 1995, April and Eddie have taken a long turn. They're looking for a small resort town where they plan to spend their honeymoon. When they spot a one appears to be a lone hitchhiker along the deserted road. They stop to help, but no longer after the woman gets into the car, they see the blood seeping from the jacket and a trunk barreling down Atticus line after them. And that's when things go south. We're gonna find out. And my last one is The Plague by Darcy Coates. There seems to be a pattern with Darcy Coates. Oh well. <laughs> she thought she was alone. Yeah, well I thought I was alone too. But anyways, it's just my demons haunting me. Anyways. <laughs> Sam is excited to spend a week in her uncle's remote lakeside cabin. It's a chance for her to focus on her art without distractions. No neighbors, no phone, and only a small radio to keep her company. It's perfect. But there's something deeply unnatural lingering by the lake. It isn't long before Sam realizes she's not alone out here. A tall, strange man stands on the edge of a dock, staring intently at the swollen waters below. At first, she tries to brush off her unease, but unnerving reports begin to surface as a ficus, missing from a nearby trail. Then he starts to follow her. He disables her car, he destroys her only way to communicate with the outside world. Stranded alone a flame, Sam may have begun to play in a hunter's deadliest game. I like to cover it spooky. Alright, so those are all the books that I have accumulated over the past few weeks, a month, give or take. So, quite a hefty pile if I don't say myself. Um, I should probably go on the book buying bed, but we all know that's not gonna happen. Oh well, but I have noticed such a decrease of me buying books, so there's that. 
But anyways, let me know what is your book haul if you have bought anything and please like, comment, subscribe. So be sure to follow every time I post and I'll see you on my next one. Adios!